Welcome to Sprout Labs webinar on platforms that support learning ecosystems. This is a little bit different to a lot of the other webinars that Sprout Labs does. It's less interactive. It's very much a demo about what our platforms do and what they what they really en enable as well. If you haven't actually heard from me before, I'm Robin Petter, the founder of Sprout Labs. Essentially, a little bit about what Sprout Labs does first. So essentially, we build digital learning platforms that enable you and your team to author, deliver, and measure high-impact digital learning ecosystems. Great digital learning is not about technologies. It's also having the sort of capabilities to be able to be able to design learning ecosystems as well. So we also run programs, and we actually now call them labs, on actually how to um, design great e-learning. E These include our e-learning superhuman program, which is on instructional design, our ecosystem program, and our, um, our visual design lab as well. I think of almost what we do as um, capability development for the L&D industry. So the three platforms we, we, we work with is Glasshouse, Totterer, and we're working on Yield, which is a new type of platform for working with XAPI data. Today we're really just looking at um, Tatara Learn, Tatara Social and, and Glasshouse. It works by labs. We are a small team. We are a group of smart people, smart ways of working. We quite often collaborate with other e-learning companies as well. So when we don't stand in isolation, we perform consortiums with other people and we, we, we work work. So be careful about the clients we work with. We've won many awards over the time we've been work, been running. Two that I'm really proud of are the Brandon Hall Awards, and these were for work we did with transforming, and still working with transforming, essentially patient examiner training across the Asian region. These are almost the Academy Awards and the most prestigious awards of the L&D industry. If you've never heard of them, they're quite hard to get. Only a handful of Australian companies actually have them. So a bit on ecosystems. At Sprout Labs, we think of ecosystems as being two things. One, a learning design philosophy and framework, and two, technologies as well. So it came to this idea of the learning ecosystem through working with blended learning and the 70-20-10 model and needing more richness and more structure to be able to design transformational learning experiences. So for us, essentially, um, a learning ecosystem it has a foundation of knowledge support. And too often, the only way to access learning in an organization is through the um, learning experiences. So actually getting it out of the learning experiences and getting it into being knowledge support. Then there's pathways because they help guide people through different experiences as well. And then hothouses that allow people to be able to um, practice places and practice. So rethinking your sort of course material and lab material is possibly ways to practice because you've removed the knowledge and put it into the foundation. And then having places for, for people to bud and grow and learn from each other and work together. Um, the last but not least is then being able to have frameworks and ways and means of allowing people to be able to learn in a flow, flow of work. Now, I'll use, explore a couple of examples of that in a few moments. The other side of this, as well as having the learning design and strategy part of it, is actually working in a way with learning technologies where they work together and they integrate it. The enabling bit for this is a piece of technology called XAPI, Experience API, which essentially is a really portable, really flexible way of being able to move the data between different types of learning platforms. And what we see is quite often that what actually happens is a learning portal becomes the center of people's experience rather than a learning record store. Um, I'm starting to use the term learning experience platform a little bit more than just learning portal because essentially that's what lots of other people are doing as well. The spot is, is a spot where essentially learning is integrated technically and it's just beyond your learning management system as well. So 
The first thing I want to talk about is a traditional LMS. It's called Toshra Learn, and this is the main. This is the LMS that the Sprout Labs is a partner for. So, Toshra Learn and the Toshra range of products essentially just give you a different, different level of flexibility. It's open source source technology, so it's got a different price point to it, um, which is really pow powerful. Powerful it can be customized the way you want to work as well. Interesting thing with Toshra as well is, is Toshra the company and then they work through um, local partners and so yeah, Sprout Labs is one of the Australian partners, which means in actual fact the user base of Toshra is quite huge um, because it's this, this interesting distributed model and model and it also means that what actually going to happen is you can end up being very close to your partner as well. Now, let's go out of full screen for a little while and, and dive into a bit of a demo of what Toshra Learn looks like. So, I've logged in as a um, learner, and essentially this is a sort of dashboard style, style view, view, view that you get. In a few moments, I'll show you some examples of what it looks more like when it's actually all branded up, styled, and um, in, in a particular look and feel. So essentially you come into here and there's a feature called programs and um, essentially an induction is a really nice example of a, example of a program. And a program is really just a series of courses and inductions are a really nice example of these things where essentially you need people to be able to do things in a progressive way on the first day, first week and then first month so you don't overwhelm them. And induction and programs are just a really nice way of working, working with these. So in here we go into the first day and then we actually go into it into a course. Now the courses I think of them as a little bit like a journey. They're not, not just a SCORM file. So essentially they have really different sort of activities that can, can come quite sort of social in themselves. There's built in wikis, discussion, discussion boards, and builds a really different type of experience. And a powerful face-to-face um, -face booking system. It's about clients when they're just getting started with digitalizing their learning. That's the first thing that they really do is they start to move towards working with um, digitalizing their um, their face-to-face their -face booking processes. So this just talk quickly about one of the couple of reasons why we became a Toshra partner. We're doing this work around the seventy twenty ten learning model and building learning ecosystems. And our clients' LMSs weren't able to work with this sort of more integrated, different way of thinking. So we actually discovered Toshra and Learn and went, actually, this does what we wanted to do. But then when we started to work with some of the other partners or even do referrals to the other partners, and most of the partners were very focused on technology. So it's one of the things we, we wanted to do when we became a partner is really focus in on um, the experience from a learn, from an L and D point of view and really people helping people people really optimize actually how they how they work with it. I'm gonna whiz out for a moment and come back in as an administrator. So here I've got a bit of a different view and things on my full apps installed in the end of the area. Now, as uh, in, in particularly this administrator account, I can come back in and see my team, and see see what people are doing, what their bookings are, what their past record records are. This can all be configured. There's a, there's a really powerful reporting engine that allows you to be able to really do whatever you want to be able to do. Um, you can add add and remove columns. We find sometimes in when we're working with other other LMSs, our clients, especially our glasshouse clients, don't always use Toshra. Um, so what we sometimes find is it's not particularly um, friendly to when it comes to reporting and customization as well. So essentially, this, that, that, that's one of the powerful things with, with Toshra. When Toshra is linked up to your HR system, one of the fantastic things you can do is build essentially audiences. I think of these a bit like cohorts where essentially different people in different job roles can be brought together in particular 
um, audiences and in particular learning allocated to them so it can be a personalized program and pathway for people. So in action, um, Tasha Learn looks more like this. This is the branded branded version. You can see more courses starting to happen. This is the learner, learner example, the learner homepage. This particular one here is a client that was started with using face-to-face -face booking. So essentially the, the um, widget that's on the homepage is their calendar of upcoming events. It makes it really easy to book in, into. The client is um, using it for external training. So essentially there's a browsable course catalog. It's a nice tiled view. view. People can, can go through the um, course catalog, choose to enroll in what they, they, they want to, and they then be meeting a different audience need. So onto the next Toshra product, which is essentially a socially focused um, needs Social. So, let's do a quick demo of this. So, Tatara Social is looks something like this. At the moment, um, there's a new version of this about to be released in May 2020 called um, Tatara Engage. Have very similar functionality, but focus a lot more on content curation. So, it's really everything you expect from a social social learning uh, platform. Um, with a little bit more structure as well, so you can do things like suggesting ideas and asking questions, which then can be question, question, question. One of the powerful things with the Totoro Ranger products is as soon as you do the integra integration back to your HR system with Totoro Learn, then all that data sinks back through into Totoro uh, Engage slash social, social as well. There's also a new um, Totoro perf perform coming out as well in May, which is essentially a next generation's um, performance management system. So keeping on moving along. So hothouses, places to practice things, places to be able to do things um, and have really interactive experiences. So this moves into Glasshouse. Glasshouse is essentially at, at its core a content um, authoring platform. It means all your content all, all in particularly one place. But it can do some other things. So it can actually Three things that's really powerful at, at and we'll, we'll dive into quickly is curate content, send employees micro learning over time, and then has a powerful form builder that allows you to be able to um, manage things like assessment processes in a really different way. So I'm actually going to get into Tatara Learn in a little bit of an odd way. I'm going to get into Glasshouse in a little bit of an odd way. I'm actually going to come back in through the induction. And demonstrate how essentially what I can do is just click on a link here and it, it does all the authentication, logs me into a site here. So essentially this is our demo site if you want to have a bit more of a play with um, what Glasshouse is, this is, a, this is probably what I'll send you. Scrolling pages, so it's all responsive, works with the different screen, screen sizes really nicely. Really rich set of tools to be able to allow you to do different types of in, in, interac interactions. Let's show a client example here. So this is a project for the Ministry of Business and Innovation in New Zealand, um, and particularly for the Intellectual Property Office. So Intellectual Property Office is the people who essentially check patents and trademarks to see if they're valid. So 
they have a quite a large training problem because essentially what they have is they need people who are at the cutting edge of new technologies to be able to understand the patents and then they need to be able to train them up in the legal aspects of the job as well so essentially take scientists and then teach them the legal part of part of their, their, their role and that takes is a combination of a training experience that's blended online working with the 70 2010 model and a strong competency based system as well so this is currently launched from their version of Totra um, quite a sort of different look and feel to what a lot of um, uh, learning experiences are. The learning experiences are all built around actual real um, documents and using a, a learning philosophy um, called word, word examples. So over time, this is starting to evolve into more and more of a um, knowledge support and knowledge platform as well. So essentially, they've got through here a um, a book which is different to their actual manual that gives sort of plain more plain English examples of things that they're building up a database of common question and answers. What's really interesting about the common questions and the answers is they actually use a feature that we use for content curation as well. So these then all get tagged with particular tags and then expose that to the tags as well. And then using this building The next step is to actually integrate this back into their case management system so they can someone can be in a spot where they're working on something and then click on the button and be able to get back in into the knowledge support with the broker. Just to quickly show another example, this is a um, essentially a health and safety option for an organization. Um, the organization does a lot of driving, so essentially so it's organized around a, around a map and the first round of scenarios is to do with planning a trip to a fairly remote location. So you navigate through these elements here, click on one of these and loads in a page, which is a, still a scrolling page, but a lot more visual than the, the, the previous one, which was pretty much te text-based. So the actual fact that it, it, it essentially part of this to demonstrate that the, the, the glasshouse has a whole set of flexibilities about the different ways it can be, be used and seen. So in going to introduce the learning ecosystem, the last thing I talked about is essentially uh, learning in the flow of work. Just going to drill into two things about learning in the flow of work, work today. That's actually about micro learning, it's, it's essentially small experiences that really integrate back into the flow of work really nicely and then not just to support managers in terms of aspects of learning as well. So we've all seen the um, forgetting curve, the thing that would essentially and it's one of those really interesting bits of R&D research that stayed around for a long time and seems to be, be, be staying around for a, for a long time, where essentially you experience something in the course and then over time you rapidly forget that if you're not applying it, using it, or um, being asked to um, retain it. So essentially one way of dealing with this is to be able to space smaller bits of technology, smaller bits of learning over time. In Glasshouse we do this through two things, um, email, and I, lots of people freak when I talk about email. An, an interesting thing in marketing is the most highest value um, thing in marketing is email. We all still live in our inboxes, even if we hate the overflow of email we get every day or we deal with um, mobile notifications. So Glasshouse can do the little notifications that can ha happen in your browser, but it can also, when it's being used, used with an app, that um, we, it, it, it works in a way where it can push out mobile notifications as well. These bits of micro-learning can be sort of things like quizzes to help people re-engage with this content and retain it and 
call it reflections or video to be reminded or expanding as well. And the other thing we find really powerful to use some of these microspace over time micro learning experiences is the nudge managers. So as someone's starting or finishing a course and messages sent to the managers to say, hey, such and such is doing this particular part of the um, program at the moment. These are the types of coaching questions you should be asking them. These are the types of things you need to be doing in the workplace. If you have this amount of time, and then if you have this amount of time, they're probably they're now able to do, do this. So it's really carefully scaffolding what's really happening in the workplace for people. So an example of where this has been packaged up into a um, app is a, is a program for Lendlease. Essentially what they're doing is running a, a one day inten intensive leadership development program in safety for all of their line managers and all of their contractors line managers. The contractors bit makes it really complicated because it means they can't use a lot of their internal, internal um, learning technologies. So we've built an app for them. It's downloadable from the store. The participant downloads it at the end of the day. They sign up. As they sign up, that registers their attendance, and then they can download their certificate. All the data from the app is going back into a learning record store, and then they integrate that back into their other business reporting systems as well. So just to show a few screens from here, really nice and simple. Most recent um, messages at the top. Click on here to expand them out. There's things like um, videos, rating experiences. So this is actually how they're collecting their NPS scores to do their um, evaluation of the program through, through the through the app. And then, um, and this one's a, a couple of couple of weeks after after the program video to reconnect, but then a reflected question to actually ask people what they're still remember, remembering as well. Now, one aspect I talked of about the ecosystem is pathways and guiding the, the idea of learning by working. One of the most powerful ways of guiding learning is actually assessing people, giving people a goal, making sure that they're really in the spot, they know what, what's expected expected from them. So the way of being able to sort of give them a pathway pathway by sitting there saying, this is what you need to do. So the problem is, you know, almost the most reliable and valid authentic assessment is actually your old workplace observations. And that's quite time consuming consuming to actually do do. Let me use a, show another example of another mobile project where essentially Glasshouse again is being used for authoring a series of assessment checklists. Um, which then go into a app which works with the learning record store but also works with the client's learning management system. This allows the client to be able to come in, select which site that they're, they're on, um, select the names of people, see what they need to be able to do in terms of the assessments that are in progress, click back through and then be able to actually have a detailed checklist here of what's, what's, what's happening and what someone needs to do in the workplace. They can add um, evidence to this by opening up the camera and actually people um, sitting there looking at it and or someone watching what's something's happening as well. This is actually you can all work offline as well, so it, it um, doesn't need need to have the connection. So it can work on really low bandwidth or um, unreliable connection connections as well. And then for last but not least, the find off by the assessor uh, and also the cans as well. So this organisation, when we started, wasn't actually a Australian registered training organisation, but it's actually moved to a spot where they are a registered training organisation. So it has all, all that sort of vigour that's needed for um, workplace assessments as well. It's been great giving you a guided tour of some of our learning technologies and some of our projects today. Really happy to have more personal conversations with you about the what you what you're interested in and what you. You, and how we might be able to help you as well. Um, thank you very much. I'll actually turn the recording off now and 
um, start by sharing. So, and then see if anyone actually has any questions.